Welcome to Manufacturing Processes, Machining and Machine Tools Lectures by Prof. Joy G. Tughosh. This is the 8th lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on turret and capstan lathe. He will be discussing about the types of turret lathe machines, comparison between turret lathe and center lathe, differences between a ram type or capstan and saddle type or a turret lathe, turret indexing mechanism, tool holder of turret lathe and typical tool layouts of turret lathe machine. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access my videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will be discussing about capstan and turret lathe. In my last lecture, I had discussed about center lathe. In center lathe, we have learned that the center lathe machine is a versatile machine, but only when it is being used by a skilled operator. Now, the industry wants the skill of the operator to be inbuilt on the, in the machine. So, therefore, in order to automate lathe machine, the result was the turret lathe or capstan lathe. The turret lathe and capstan lathe are two different types of lathe, but sometimes turret lathe is a common name used to refer to both these type of lathe. So we will discuss about the difference between a turret lathe and a capstan lathe, which has a significant difference which we will be discussing in this lecture. But let's move on with our discussion. <coughs> So this is a schematic diagram of a turret lathe. In order to understand turret lathe, we will understand turret lathe with respect to a center lathe machine. Now, if you look at the pictures, it will be clear to you there is a no tail stock. The tail stock is replaced by a hexagonal turret and each face of the turret can hold different types of tools. In fact, for a turret machine, there are different types of tool holders which are designed and which are capable of holding more than one tool. <coughs> so for each face of the tool, we can use a tool holder and which can hold different types of tools. So there are six faces. On six faces, we can hold different types of tool holders. It, <coughs> it has been told that uh, in hexagonal turret is capable of holding about 15 tools, 15 or more tools. And also we have a, a carriage on which there is a square mm, turret tool post where four tools can be held. Now, in some machines, particularly in capstan lathe, there is a rear tool post also. That is a tool post on the other side. So, four more tools can be held. This is one of the foremost differences between engine lathe and in the center lathe and a turret lathe. In a turret lathe, the uh, tools, that is multiple tools, in one face of the uh, turret can take cut. So, multiple cuts can be taken. So, two tools held in a tool holder fitted to a face of a turret can take cut simultaneously. This is which is not possible in a lathe machine. Also, there is a tool, there may be a tool which is cutting fitted to the turret face which is cutting and simultaneously there is a tool fitted to the uh, square turret which is also cutting. So, simultaneous cutting can also be taking place. Multiple cutting and simultaneous cutting both can be taken place. Of course, turret is a production machine. Lathe machine is not a production machine. It is highly accurate and the skill of the operator is inbuilt in this machine. Why the skill of the operator is inbuilt in this machine is because in this hexagonal turret is automatically indexed. That means depending on the type of the work, the operator or the foreman, normally it is done by the foreman in the <coughs> range of the foreman, according to the tool layout, he will be setting the turret. That means the tools will be set in the face of the turret according to the requirement of the tool for producing that particular job. So, <coughs> tool number one will be on phase two one, tool number two will be in phase two. So, likewise, 
the thread will be set up depending on the type of job it will be uh, manufacturing or machining and the amount of distance moved by the turret that is the feed the total feed can be preset that means once we preset each face of the turret will move a particular amount of distance only so once this is set an unskilled operator or a semi skilled operator can produce the component required in mass <clears throat> so therefore it is a mass production machine and is a product <clears throat> therefore it is widely used in industry the tool the thread cutting mechanism is slightly different here we do not use a uh, lead screw here and for thread cutting we use a die uh, which will be fitted to the face of the turret so these are the differences between an engine lathe and a turret lathe we will also discuss the construction of the turret lathe as we discuss the difference between uh, saddle type or turret lathe and ram type on capstan lathe <coughs> Okay, so these are some of the images. Okay, let us discuss the differences. Here. Okay, differences we will discuss with this figure. So, this is a turret lathe and this is a capstan lathe. Sorry, this is a turret lathe and this is a capstan lathe. So, this is a saddle type lathe and this is a ram type lathe. So, ram type lathes are called capstan lathe and saddle type lathes are called turret lathe. Now, why it is called a saddle type lathe is because there is a, on the bed which there is a saddle over which the turret is mounted, the external turret is mounted. Whereas in this construction, on the bed there is a saddle, on top of the saddle there is a ram, on, on top of the ram this, the, this hexagonal turret is mounted. Now, this is a difference. Now, what is the different advantage of having this, this kind of arrangement and advantage of having this kind of arrangement? So, the advantage of having this kind of arrangement is that you can move the two turret manually very easily because you just have to move the uh, ram which will move forward and take the cut whereas for moving the turret we have to move the entire saddle unit so manually it will make it very very cumbersome and another difference is that so here as it is moving forward it is extending as it is extending the distance between the uh, this face of the saddle and this face of the turret keeps on increasing as the cart is progressed. So this kind of cantilever uh, arrangement decreases the uh, accuracy of the machine. Whereas in a saddle lathe, the saddle and the turret both moves. So therefore the accuracy is much better in a turret lathe or the saddle type lathe. And in a saddle type lathe, typically most of the saddle type or turret lathe has a side hung carriage. The side hung carriage that means carriage is only of the one side. Whereas in a capstan lathe, normally it has uh, this carriage on both sides of the bed. So therefore here more tools can be held. Whereas the advantage of this is that the diameter of the workpiece that can be held will be more. So normally the saddle type turrets or the turret lathes are uh, bigger in sizes and are much more accurate compared to that of a capstan lathe. So these are the differences between a ram type and a saddle type. Uh, turret lathe. Now we will be discussing the turret indexing mechanism. Turret indexing mechanism can be of various types. This is one particular mechanism that we will be discussing. It is a very very interesting mechanism from mechanical and production engineering point of view. Here first we will discuss the construction of the uh, the construction of the uh, mechanism and then we will discuss the working of this mechanism. So <clears throat> as I point out the name of the component, try to identify the component in the figure. So first is number 5 is the spindle and on this spindle four components are mounted. Number 1 is a hexagonal turret, number 2 is an index plate, number 3 is a bevel gear, number 4 is an indexing ratchet. Number 4 is an indexing ratchet. Now <clears throat> All these four are mounted on the spindle 5, which basically means if any one of the component of the five component rotates, then the other four components will also rotate. Now currently, all these five components are locked by a plunger number 14. 
by a plunger number 14. Now this plunger is housed inside a housing mm -hmm. and it is spring loaded and it is spring loaded and notice that there is a plunger pin number 13 this plunger pin is extending outside the housing is extending outside the housing now all this all this component sorry all this component excluding number 12 of course will travel in this direction can travel in this direction during the cut now, <coughs> Now let's say uh, uh, also very important this is a plunger actuating cam number 10 notice the profile of this cam it is slanted upwards and it is fixed to the lathe bed and there is a uh, indexing ratchet number 7 notice the profile of the indexing ratchet and notice the profile of the plunger actuating cam okay now let us name this thing let us name it as one two three four five six let us name it as a b c d e f <clears throat> okay now everything is fixed and the hexagonal turret is moving in this direction taking a cut by the tool fitted in the phase one by the tool fitted in the phase one so the cut is complete and after the cut is complete it is returned the entire uh, assembly is returned it may be automatic it may be manually so as it returns the plunger pin 13 when it reaches this position very interesting now currently the plunger pin 13 is in this position okay now as it reaches this position and as we move forward in this direction so this lifts off the plunger actuating cam this lifts up the plunger actuating cam now, as it lifts up the plunger actuating cam the plunger moves inside the housing because it is spring loaded and it is traveling over this so the plunger is lifting inside the housing as the plunger lifts inside the houses it becomes free from this slot a it becomes free from this slot a and the index plate 2 becomes free when index plate 2 becomes free, the hexagonal turret 1, the bevel gear 3, the ratchet 4 and 5 all becomes free. Now, during this time, all this was happening, this indexing ratchet, sorry, the indexing um, pole will get engaged with one of the slots of this ratchet. And as we are moving in this direction, it will apply a component of force. As a result, this ratchet will rotate. The ratchet will rotate as the ratchet rotates all the other component 1 2 3 and 5 will also rotate now as the rotation is one sixth of a rotation when the rotation is one sixth of a rotation the plunge the plunger pin here will falls down when it falls down it will lock it will lock in the slot b because by the one sixth of rotation slot b will be here and the plunger pin will lock at slot b when it locks in slot b everything will be locked and the phase 2 will be positioned here so the next tool comes in position with respect to the workpiece so this is called the indexing this is called the indexing now in this indexing mechanism there is also another mechanism which is called the feed mechanism <clears throat> not the feed mechanism or feed setting mechanism actually we can set the amount of feed that means for each phase if each phase has to move a specific distance or each tool has to cut a specific length that can be fixed now remember in this pin this bevel gear 3 we have not discussed the functioning of this bevel gear 3 this bevel gear 3 messes with the pinion bevel gear uh, let's say let us name it as whatever give it name and it is mounted on the shaft 11 and this shaft 11 on the shaft 11 there is circular disc on which there are six holes like this 
on each of the six holes there are stop rods that is eight number eight so like this there are eight stop rods each of the stop rods are aligned for one of the faces with the stop part 12 the stop part 12 is fixed on the lathe bed this is stop part 12 is fixed on the lathe bed now let's say for <coughs> phase 1 currently this stop part 1 is in position so by setting the distance or this distance we can control the amount of travel by the phase 1 and when the bevel gear 3 rotates 1 6 of a rotation this pinion bevel gear also rotates 1 6 of a rotation the shaft 11 also rotates 1 6 of a rotation and the disc also rotates 1 6 of a rotation and number 2 stop rods will be in position with respect to the stopper 12 and again it is set according to the job requirement the amount of distance the phase 2 has to move that is the amount of length the phase the tool fitted in the phase 2 has to cut this is all preset so once everything is set then a semi skilled operator can perform the operations so this is the working of a direct indexing mechanism this is a typical tool layout and this is tool holders so you can see here different types of tool holders are used in a turret lathe you can see box tool holder you can see how a boarding bar is held with adjustable slide you can give vertical feed here so different types of tool threading dies can be fitted stopper rods can be fitted here it is not shown here so different kinds of tool holders are available for turrets which makes it much more versatile and typical tool layout uh, this is one of the i have taken from this site see the job is given for each of for this completing this job enter setup is shown here in the diagram <coughs> and the operations is given as number one so number one so there are there will be i think 10 operations that has to be performed so <coughs> for each of the operations it is indicated here one eight the first tool performs one eight then two then three then six then seven then we have 8 and then 9 so like this different types of uh, tools are fitted for different operations that require to produce this particular job so <coughs> for a particular component in a machine in a turret lathe this type of layout are drawn and based on this drawing the foreman will be setting the turret and once the turret is set a semi-skilled operator can also perform the job so this is all about turret lathes it's basically a semi-automatic lathe uh, which uh, we have converted the lathe machine so that it can be used for uh, as a production machines so thank you all of you for uh, watching this video 